We've got two breeds of people today in America who are living in under a spirit of deception. We have those on one side who have been deceived by the powers that be and are continuing to be deceived daily. And uh, then we have those on the left side who want to believe that everything is as it's always been, and it is just, we can fix this, you know, this will change. I've got news for you. The Holy Ghost spoke to me this week and said, nothing is the same. The rules have all changed. And if you don't believe that, you're as deceived as the people that you criticize on the right side. If you think for one minute that everything today is going to be fixed through normal means and through normal process, you are in a state of deception, folks. You are in a state of deception. There has been a process in the works to literally perpetrate. I've said this many, many times. I'm going to say it again. There has been a process in the works to perpetrate a coup. The right has wanted power in this country. They do not want it democratically. They do not want it according to the Constitution. They hate the Constitution. The Constitution does not serve them. And they know it. And they've been trying to twist and pervert the words of the Constitution for decades to try to make it, you know, they can't make an argument that it doesn't say what it says. So the argument they try to make instead is, well, our founding fathers wrote it with this intention. Am I telling the truth? Have you not heard that argument? See, they can't change the words of the Constitution. So what they're trying to do is they're trying to suggest that anyone who interprets the Constitution differently than they want it interpreted is because they're not reading it right. Because after all, the Founding Fathers were a bunch of Christians and they wrote the Constitution to establish a Christian nation. i got news for you. That is a lie from hell. That is a lie from the devil. America was not established as a Christian nation, nor was it established by a boatload of Christians, folks. And anybody who wants to be an honest student of history knows that to be a fact. Anyone who wants to be an honest student of history knows that Masonism had more of an impact on the founding of this nation than Christianity did. just going to say it. Anybody who wants to be honest knows that to be a fact. Our founding father, as he is called, George Washington, wore a Masonic apron as he was sworn in president of the United States of America. That is a historical fact. That is not, that is not one of, you know, the rights hairball schemes that they, you know, the, 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 uh, the idiotic, you know, fallacies they throw out that have no basis in fact. I'm not talking something that has no basis in fact. There are pictures that have been painted of George Washington taking his oath, and he is wearing his Masonic apron. And I got news for you. Masonry and Christianity are not compatible in the least. Not in the least the least. So if you think this country was based, but you see, Satan can't deceive you on the big things unless he can first make you believe little lies. And that is one of the little lies that he has had people in this country believing for ages. Oh, America was based on Christian values. America was based on Christian principles. No, no. America was based on basic moral values, you think that? But morality will not get you into heaven. Jesus will. And Jesus had nothing to do with the founding of the United States of America. I've got news for you. It had nothing at all to do with the founding of this country. We, we, 
we are in a bad, 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 bad state of affairs. The Spirit of the Lord finally spoke to me, finally, and let me know. Do you know why your church has been empty all these years? Do you know why you've been incapable of getting people to come into this church all these years? You know why? There's been a purpose. Now, I, for years, I felt like God was punishing me. You know, I felt like maybe it was because I wasn't doing something right, Sister Lisa, or I wasn't preaching something right. And the Holy Ghost spoke to me and said, no, sir, that has nothing to do with it. Has nothing to do with it. Has to do with the fact that everything was going to change. And this is not a time in history to be building a church in the traditional sense. This is not the right time for that. We are going to be resuming services in our home shortly. Uh, there's a lot that needs to be done, an awful lot that needs to be done. Uh, we are going to sell off a lot of stuff the church owns, a lot of stuff the church has. Uh, we don't need it right now, and I doubt highly we're going to need it in the foreseeable future. We are going to simplify. Last Sunday was a clear, a clear indication, Lisa, that... It don't take but a sneeze for us to be down to the Holy Trinity being in church and that's it. The three of us and that's all. I can't, can't be paying $500 a week, folks, for a meeting place for us to have three people show up for church. Can't do it. Can't do it. Makes no sense. I'm not even going to move across the way and pay $400 a week for us to do that. Makes no sense. Makes no sense. Our ministry is primarily an internet ministry. Our ministry is primarily via the waves of, you know, the internet anyway. So what we're going to do is we're basically going to set up our sunroom kind of like a TV studio of sorts. And we're going to put chairs, but we're not going to do it like we did last time. It's not going to be as formal as last time. We're just, if, if there's so many of us there, that's how many chairs we're going to have. So you'll have plenty of room and you'll be able to be comfortable. We're not going to do this thing the way we've been doing it. Why? Everything has changed. I'm not just talking about for our church. I'm talking about in our world. Everything has changed. Donald Trump has spent his life circumventing the law in order to get his way. Breaking laws, hiding, deceiving, conning. I've got news for you folks. The Republicans have no thought in the universe of giving up any power in this country ever, ever. I'm not talking about in the 2020 election. I'm talking about from this day forward, they have no thought in the universe of giving up power. The Constitution is about to be shredded. There's a reason why Brett Kavanaugh was so important to the Supreme Court. There's a reason why it had to be this man. They could have easily withdrawn his nomination and put somebody else forward. It happens all the time. Many presidents have done that. But why instead did we see the Republicans railroading like we've never seen Republicans railroading before? Why have we seen the president who is not supposed to be part of the entire process of vetting a Supreme Court justice because the Senate is there to advise and approve. The president is supposed to step back and let the Senate do its job. This jackass isn't about to do that. He puts his fingers in the Justice Department, where they don't belong. He puts his fingers in the Supreme Court, where they don't belong. He puts his fingers in the advice and approval process, where he doesn't belong. They needed this specific man, because this specific man could care less about the U.S. Constitution. He has no interest whatsoever 
in the Constitution of the United States of America. And I've got news for you folks, and I, I'm telling you, this entire service today, from the minute I started talking till we're finished, is prophetic. You put it on your calendar and see if I'm telling the truth. Write it down, and as things come to pass, tell me that I was lying and fibbing to you. They had to get this man on the bench because from this day forward, Donald Trump is going to begin to do things that are so against the Constitution, that are so contrary to the Constitution, that it's not even funny. And when it reaches the Supreme Court, he's going to get a stamp of approval. He'll be able to get away with anything he wants to do. Damn the Constitution. He's already put in for all the groups and people on Facebook who are against him. And he was given, he was given warrants to be able to go to Facebook and request this information. Facebook's been fighting it in court. Guess what's going to happen when it gets to the Supreme Court? Supreme Court's going to say, oh, for national security, he should have access to this information. Why, well, yes, we need to have access to this. He has put in for every group and every individual on Facebook who is working against him in a formal, organized fashion. Got news for you. That includes this duck right here. I tried to tell you all, you better have an exit strategy. You better have an exit strategy. If you're watching me on Facebook, you can call me a fear monger all you want to. I'm trying to tell you, I'm trying to save your life. You better have an exit strategy. If you've never saved money in your life, you better start saving it now. If you've never put aside uh, money for things, you better start doing it now. Because you better realize you're going to have to head to Canada before too long. You watch and see, folks, there's going to be a mass exodus. As soon as this Constitution starts being torn up like a meaningless document, as soon as the Supreme Court starts red stamping everything Donald Trump wants to do, Constitution be damned, you watch. There are going to be people, especially celebrities and people with great wealth and people that have money, they're going to be jumping off this ship faster than you can save boot. Because they know what's coming. They see what's coming. One gentleman said, America is today beginning to see what Germany experienced in the 1930s. One third of the population would happily kill another third of the population. While one third of the population sits back and watches. That's where we're at right now, people. That is where we're at right now. We have a president who, a president, I, I can't even believe I, I'm saying these words. We have a president who is going out of his way to start a civil war. And there are people out there on the left Martin, who still don't want to believe this preacher. They still want to think that I'm just overboard. They still want to think I'm just being exaggerative. Oh, 2018 elections, we'll fix this. Oh, really? Why do you think they wanted Kavanaugh on the bench so quick? Why do you think they wanted him in before the midterms? Because when Donald Trump says, oh, they've been setting the stage, people. Pence has been out there claiming that China, now they're trying to distract attention away from Russia interfering in our election. And they're accusing China of trying to interfere in our election. After the elections, you watch Trump will say, oh no, these, these elections weren't valid. All these Democrats didn't really win. There was no blue wave. No, this all happened because China's been interfering. And let him declare the elections invalid. And guess what? He's got a Supreme Court now that's going to rubber stamp it. Yes, he's right. He's the president. If he says, if he says the election's invalid, he's the president. We, that's the case. And we're right back to the same old mess we've been in 
since that man first walked in the White House. I tried to tell you people, I tried to tell everybody in the world, I tried to tell people on Facebook, the minute Donald Trump walked into the White House, I'm going to put this in the plainest English I could put it, this country was screwed. That man should have been shot dead before they allowed him to so much as step foot in the White House. I, I'm just saying it. If I wind up in jail over it, so be it. I'm not the one planning on shooting him. I'm not talking about shooting him. But I'm saying it would have been better for America if he'd have been shot dead before he ever stepped foot because the minute he was allowed to step foot in the White House, you cannot give a wicked man with wicked intentions the power of the presidency, people. You can't do it. There's too much there he can do. And ever since he got in, every single thing he's done, what people don't realize, Brett Kavanaugh's not in the Supreme Court because of abortion. <laughs> That's not the issue they're worried about. That, that has nothing to do with why. He could be as anti-abortion as, or as pro-abortion as anybody on this planet, and the Republicans could care less. You know why he's there? Because he believes in an expanded presidential powers. Almost limitless presidential powers. Basically, he believes the president should be a dictator. The president should be above the law. According to him, if the president sees something as being unconstitutional, then he should be able to act and without any repercussions because after all, he is the president. So in other words, one man suddenly has the power to interpret the Constitution whatever way he wants to see it, whatever way he wants to interpret it. That's what Brett Kavanaugh believes. He believes the president is no longer a private citizen who is subject to the laws of this country like any other private citizen. No, a president should not be able to be indicted while in office. Why not? If he breaks the law, of course he should be able to be indicted like anybody else. We're a nation of laws. Well, we used to be. Everything has changed, folks. I'm telling you right now, everything has changed. You don't know the hell we're about to see in this country. You don't know the trouble we're about to see opening up in this country. Trump is, I've been telling you for ages, I hate talking politics, but this is so stinking important, I cannot help but do it. He has been playing, I've said this over and over again, he has been playing by Hitler's playbook from the word go. From the first minute he started his presidential campaign, he has been playing by Hitler's playbook. Hitler said such things as, hate is more powerful than dislike. So what you want to do is, you want to make people hate certain things. Not just dislike it or disapprove of it. You want to make them hate. Well, who's, let me see, who's been a target of Donald Trump's hate campaign since he started running for president, he wins by fraudulent means, gets in the White House, and he still, still is fostering hate against this person. Who could it be? Hillary Clinton. Mm -hmm. she, he, her name should never even cross his lips. No, no, Hitler said hate is more powerful than dislike. So what he's doing is he's using her as a target to keep the hate flowing. Do you follow what I'm telling you? He said, you take all of your enemies, Hitler said, take all of your enemies and put them in one category. He said, you don't, you don't, you don't want to have 800 different enemies. You don't want to have the anti-abortion, you don't want to have, or the pro-abortion, you don't want to have the pro gate you don't want to have all these separate enemies. No, no, you want one enemy that you can focus on explicitly. Donald Trump, 
Listen to every word that comes out of his mouth. The Democrats, the Democrats, the Democrats. He is literally stirring up hatred on the right for everybody who's not one of them. He is dividing this country right down the middle, just like the Civil War, just like the first Civil War. Say, well, what purpose will it serve for America to break out in another civil war? Well, I'll tell you what purpose it would serve. It would be the perfect opportunity for Donald Trump then to put us under martial law. Habeas corpus is thrown out the window just like uh, Abraham Lincoln had to do. Because when you're at war, you can't protect people's constitutional rights. How can you do that? You know, how can, how, if, 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 if you've got two sides trying to kill each other, how in the world can you, you know, go through the process of, oh, we have to get warrants to do searches, we have to, you know, all the things the Constitution requires. You can't do that in a time of war. Lincoln had to suspend habeas corpus. Trump will do the same thing. You know what that means? That means the Constitution goes out the window. Is there a reason Trump is pushing so hard, trying to divide this country, trying to get us to start murdering one another? Is there a reason why he is stirring up such division and such hatred? Absolutely, folks, because the minute violence breaks out, we have civil war. Habeas corpus goes out the window. The Constitution is suspended. We are officially a dictatorship. And if you think today we are not, this close, that close, from a full-blown dictatorship, you are diluted. You cannot let a man as evil and as wicked as Donald Trump anywhere near power. Because he is not going to use that power to benefit the American people. No. Ever since he's been in office, guess what he's been using that power to do? To solidify his power. To keep him in power. His plan from day one was to become a dictator. That's it. His personality is such that all he can be is a dictator. He cannot work within the confines of any restraints or any laws. He's never done it his entire life. He's been breaking laws and working around things his entire life. That's how he works. The minute they let him step into the White House, this democracy was over. And I told people, I told y'all, I told y'all during the campaign, I told y'all, I said that man cannot even be allowed to step in the White House. He is so demonic. Any Christian that supports him is deceived out of their mind because they're not recognizing the attributes in this man, the wickedness in this man. Even if Hitler, you want to know one of the other things Hitler said, I promise I'm going to get off this in a minute. You know one of the other things Hitler said? Hitler said that faith is harder to overcome than reason. So you know what he did? He put a faith twist on everything that he did. Huh, sound familiar? <laughs> Donald Trump's about as religious as a grapefruit. His entire life he has been as spiritual as a walnut. All of a sudden, oh, he's just the most spiritual man. Everything he's doing, stacking the Supreme Court, he's doing that for abortion. He's doing that for those who oppose gay rights. He's putting a religious spiritual twist on everything. Why? Because he knows he can't win in the, in the arena of reason. No. The only way he can win is if he puts that spiritual twist. That way he has all these religious robots supporting him and pushing him and being right behind him. You follow what I'm telling you? This man is following Hitler's playbook to the 
letter. Hitler claimed, he said, I believe that everything I am doing is in keeping with the will of the Almighty. So Hitler's extermination of Jews and all of that, he said, I'm doing God's work. We got a guy now who says, oh, I'm doing God's work. Doesn't care nothing about God. Never has cared anything about God. All of a sudden, though, I'm doing God's work. And he's got all these people just worshiping at his feet, just doing his bidding. Because after all, everything he's doing, he's, what they don't realize is Brett Kavanaugh on the Supreme Court has nothing to do with abortion. It doesn't, he doesn't care about that. Brett Kavanaugh on the Supreme Court is about assuring him a permanent position in the White House. Keeping him permanently in the White House. One of my Facebook friends this week finally acknowledged, I've been saying it for years, and he finally said this week in a post, he said, Donald Trump is literally setting himself up for permanent power. He finally saw it. I was so aggravated. I said, well, I've been saying that for the last three and a half years and four years, and you're finally seeing it now, huh? You're finally seeing what he's up to now. And the religious right, like a bunch of idiots, have been supporting him the whole way because he's claiming everything he's doing is on their behalf. And they don't realize everything he's doing, he's doing for very different reasons. Very different reasons. But he's putting that spiritual twist on it, Martin, because that's how he gets these brainless idiots to support him. Because they haven't got enough discernment to stamp out an ant farm. I'm telling you, I've preached in recent years, we need discernment today more than we've ever needed discernment in the history of the world. And the church as a whole is completely devoid of discernment.